I'm going to start this first inaugural actual episode of Myth Weaving with probably one of my most controversial takes in all of my world building beliefs. And I have quite a few of them. And that is, quite simply put, hard magic systems are bad for your story and you probably shouldn't do them. Yeah, there, I said it. Hello, my name's Charlie. Welcome to this episode of Myth Weaving. I'm very excited to be doing this podcast about all things world building and writing. And I think we're finishing our series on magic systems today. We've gone through and talked about a lot of different things regarding magic systems over the last couple weeks, but I think we finally hit the end of the journey. Yeah, I, I don't think that hard magic systems are good. I don't think that they're helpful. I don't think that they're something that most writers should play around with. And I'm not saying that lightly. I'm not saying that facetiously. And I'm not saying that to just have like a nice, hot, spicy take on this topic. Hard magic systems, one, are really, really hard to pull off. They are kind of basically, if you're doing a hard magic system, you're going to want to create the metaphysics of your setting in such a profoundly detailed way that magic should become predictable. So doing that successfully is a really hard thing to do, and it is a very difficult task to pull off. It's even harder to convey a hard magic system to readers without boring them to tears. I'm not saying that it can't be done, and I'm not saying that it hasn't been done. I'm just saying that it is a Herculean task that if you don't have to add it to your to-do list, maybe it's something that you shouldn't do. Because soft magic systems can cover most of what you're dealing with, and if you've been paying attention to the previous episodes on magic systems, you'll notice that I think even soft magic systems should have some established rules just to guide you as a writer on how to properly convey the world to your readers. But maybe that's not enough for you. Maybe you're still of the mindset that you should go out there and make all of the rules. Well, if you're going to do that, one, I highly recommend that you go and watch either Tim Hicks's wonderful video on Hello Future Me, his channel on YouTube that he did, I think, two years ago on designing hard magic systems, where he goes into a lot of detail. Or go watch Brandon Sanderson's lecture series on his channel, where he talks about doing hard magic systems. Today, we're going to talk more philosophically about why you may or may not want to have a hard magic system in your world. And you've heard my first basic argument. It's, it's, they can be boring to people. And I I mean that in the best possible way. Look, I love rules. I I am a minutia reader. When I am getting into a setting, the more minutia there is for me to dip my toe in and to dig into, the happier I am. Like, I love the Lord of the Rings. I love it so much. I love Dune and trying to put together the pieces of history that are scattered throughout Frank Herbert's books. I've I've yet to read any of Brian Herbert's books, though I've heard mixed things. I love Minutia. I do. I do. I think it's one of the reasons why She Who Shall Not Be Named had a lot of the success that she did because of her successful use of Minutia. Magic systems, on the other hand, can be problematic because if not dealt with deftly, they are going to lead your readers to feel like they are in a metaphysics class having to study at the foot of the master in order to understand your story. And that is not a good look. That's not a feeling that you should convey to your characters. So what do you do? Well, first of all, you have to answer that question. Why? If you haven't noticed in all of these episodes, the one thing I'm trying to get you to look at more than anything else is why you might want a hard magic system, why you might want a soft magic system or illuminism or any of the other things that you could have in your story. Because if you don't have a good why, 
you don't have a good reason for spending the time doing it in the first place. So, why create a hard magic system? Why might you want to go through the backbreaking effort <laughs> to sculpt a magic system in its entirety into existence? Well, I would say if the magic is so integral to the plot that it is 100% necessary for your readers to understand it so they don't have the sense that, oh, that's happening because a wizard did it, then you should do a hard magic system. It's really the only way to try to ameliorate that problem but it's not guaranteed to do so. See, if you haven't noticed the trend in what I've been saying through this entire process, magic is a really hard thing to sell to your readers. It, more than anything else, requires a greater suspension of disbelief, mainly because it comes from nowhere. Science fiction often gets to cheat this because... Oh no, it's it's this technological doodad. Because we know, hey, technological doodads can do a lot of technological doodaddy things. And this is the future. And as the great quote goes, any sufficiently any sufficiently advanced technology would appear as magic to people more primitive, right? So it's very easy to hand wave things away in science fiction and say the device did it because this is the device of doing that specific thing. Okay. Okay, fine. That That's how it works over there. That's how it works in soft magic systems, by the way. You just hand wave it, right? How do they do magic? They have a wand. Well, how does the wand work? You say a magic word and you swish it just right. Oh, okay. Magic system accomplished. Wingardium Leviosa, <laughs> right? It's, it's very simple. You can just hand wave it away because you're able to play off of some of those technological tropes, right? This is one of the things that most wuxia has in common, right? How are they able to do this? Because they have developed their core. Oh, what is their core? It's where the chi is in their body and the system by which it is utilized by the body for the effect desired. Oh, okay. And so how did they run through the air? Well, they run through the air because they know qinggong, they know light body technique, and thus they can actually change the density of their body and fly. Oh, okay. And you just kind of roll with it because it sounds simple, and it's a one-to-one-to-one progression. If you're doing a hard magic system, try to do it that way so that you boiled the frog into it. Because if you don't, it's going to be problematic no matter what you do. And say hello to the sirens. I I, have tried re-recording and the sirens are just, they're a thing today. So I'm sorry. (laughs) I I apologize. But if I'm going to get an episode out, there will be sirens, apparently. So this is your, your quest. You've decided it's so integral to the story that if they don't understand it, the story won't make sense. Now, stop and ask yourself again, is that true? Am I lying? Because there's a very good chance you just lied to yourself. Because Lord of the Rings requires you to understand the nature of the One Ring, and the nature of the magic of Sauron, and the nature of the magic of Morgoth. Because if you don't understand all of that going all the way back to Er Eru Iluvatar and how magic actually works in his setting, then the One Ring seems a bit silly. And you can see people who have not dipped their toe into the minutia not understanding this and saying things like, why didn't they just have the eagles fly them over? That's because those aren't really eagles. They are powerful beings that are, they're Maiar. They, they, they are even more powerful than Gandalf. They used to kill dragons back in the first war with the first Dark Lord. And the stronger the creature, the more the craving for the power possessed by the ring. 
But they don't know any of that, so they just go, why not have them ride eagles? You're going to have to sell it. So, hard or soft, it doesn't... You're, you're still going to have to do the selling. It's just, do you need to do the work that you're asking of yourself? Okay, so I'm going to try one last time. One last time to talk you out of doing a hard magic system. If you think that you can write it in such a way that your audience will find it interesting to read, that's a big hurdle in and of itself. Two, you think it's integral enough to the story that it has to be included so that they understand everything because then they won't feel like a wizard did it. Okay. Reason number three, (laughs) that you might not want to do a hard magic system. Are you writing a series? Now, the answer to that is probably yes, because there are very few standalone fantasy books anymore. They do exist. They are out there in the world. But most fantasy books are part of trilogies or longer works, because that has just become the standard of the medium. Not hating on that. It's just a, a statement of fact. It's the way things are. Remember you are going to have to reiterate your rules in each book. You are, for two reasons. One, not everybody who picks up book three in your series is going to have read books one and two. And so you're going to have to make sure that they understand everything in book three enough on the merits of book three alone that they go, oh, wait, this is part of a series, and go back and pick up the previous two books. I know that sounds crazy. I know that sounds like, well, with this day and age where you can just click the series button that most booksellers have and see all the books in series, that that wouldn't be an issue anymore. But it is still an issue because people see that cover and maybe there's something about book three's cover that really interests them or the back back cover copy and they want to get in there. You cannot rely on the idea that they are going to have read books one and two before they get to book three and so on and so forth, depending on how many books that you have in your series. So you're going to have to reiterate at least enough of the rules of magic yet again, in a way that is not boring to readers who have done their homework and are not in a way that feels like you're telling them to do their homework, Kent and somehow still make it interesting because you need to do that one for the new readers two for existing readers who are probably not going to remember your rules of magic unless they're super fans because let's be honest unless they're super fans they're probably not going to remember because each of your books let's face it it's a fantasy series right so your books are big and there were probably times in between reading them maybe they're binging your books and you're fine But you can't rely on them binging your book, so you're going to have to remind them about the rules of magic. The more rules there are, the more time you're going to be spending in recap, and the less time you're going to be moving the story forward. This, to me, is what kills a lot of fantasy books for me, is I will start reading a series, and it just starts bogging down because of the world building. And I am somebody who loves world building and wants to do it to the exclusion of all other work. And I'm saying this. So bear that in mind as you're working on your fiction. You need to figure out exactly how you're going to tell these stories and be sure that you're willing to put in that work. Don't think that you can just explain the rules in book one and you're good in book seven. No, you're going to have to reiterate them along the way and make sure that they are reiterated in book seven so that we understand what they are when they're important in that book. So, do you think you're going to be able to do all that? Look, I don't want to, like, steal your joy. If writing hard magic systems is your, like, raison d'etre, if it makes you really happy, do it. Do it. But like with soft magic systems and people thinking that they can get away with doing absolutely no work and pull off a soft magic system, which is not how that works. Hard magic systems are an almost infinite amount of more labor, not just in the crafting of them, but in the continuous need to explain and expound upon them for your readers 
so that they actually perform the task that they are set up to, to do. If you don't have that layered out, it's not going to work the way you want it to, and that's going to bring everybody down. So, you think you got the time and patience for all that? So, you've decided that you're ready to tough it out. You're going to make it. You're going to be the one. You're going to tell this story the way you want to tell this story, and it's going to be beautiful, perfect, immaculate, mwah, just complete chef's kiss from beginning to end, and everyone is going to love it. Okay. And you're going to be able to do that over and over again. Okay. All of my warnings, all of my caveats you have taken to heart, and you've decided still to do this. And again, I'm not trying to talk you out of your joy. I'm not trying to harsh your buzz. I'm not trying to rob you of your bliss. Just trying to make sure you know what you're getting into. So you've decided to construct your magic system. I, I'm going to tell you the one thing that I never see people talking about magic systems do, and I, I'm going to let you know right now. <laughs> this is not going to be conventional wisdom, because honestly, you if, if you haven't already watched Brandon Sanderson's videos or Tim Hickson's videos on this topic, you really should. Just go get Tim, Henson, T- Tim Hicks's book on world building, and it'll help you out a lot on the basics. I'm just trying to fill gaps that are out there in the oeuvre because, well, honestly, I I don't feel like just copying their work, copying and pasting their work. And I feel like that's what a lot of writing advice is, is just people copying and pasting other people's work. No tea, no shade. Anyway, so the most important rule that you have in all of this is Occam's razor. You have to employ it. You have to employ it. You have to employ it. I'm just going to just recite that. That's going to be the rest of this podcast. It's just me chanting. You have to use Occam's razor. You have to use Occam's razor. You have to use Occam's razor. Okay, I'm kidding. That's not the rest of the podcast, but I'm really curious to see how many people are going to stop listening right there because they think that I'm seriously going to fill the rest of this with just me chanting that. Um, it's a little things that you do to entertain yourself. So what is Occam's Razor? Occam's Razor is very simple. It's basically Sherlock Holmes, right? When you re- removed the impossible, the improbable, the impossible, sorry, whatever you have left, no matter how improbable is probably true. In other words, the shortest explanation is usually the right one. Make sure that you're employing this. The more convoluted your magic system gets, the harder it's going to be for people to suspend their disbelief. So if you're adding stages, so before we do the spell, we have to go to X and do this, and then go there and do this. And we have to perform this ritual with the feathers of this mysterious lost creature under this specific moon that only comes about once every thousand years. You see how this is getting verified and each step that we're adding to it is making us uh, not want to suspend our disbelief anymore? Yeah. Be very, very careful. Be very mindful of what you're doing because the more complex you make your magic system, the harder it's going to be for people to buy into it. So, Occam's Razor. Just employ Occam's Razor. There they are again. Don't know if you can hear them, but more sirens because the world is on fire. Um, It's all about Occam's Razor. So what is the simplest way that you can get from A to B? And try to maintain that. Try to maintain that to the best of your ability. Because, like I keep saying, complex convoluted systems are one going to drag your story down because being a hard magic system, you have to explain why it is so complex and convoluted. And your first draft, especially of a hard magic system, probably will be complex and convoluted. You may not realize it. You may think that it's elegant, but start writing spells. Start writing rituals. However magic works in your setting, start just, okay, I want to do magic missile. How would I accomplish that in this setting? Magic missile, if you don't know, is that thing that every magic system has where you make a projectile of magical oomph and you throw it at somebody else. 
Okay, virtually every magic system has this in some way, shape, or form. So, what are the steps to getting there? What do you have to do? Now, how many of those steps can be removed permanently so that the system is more elegant? Because elegant and refined is beauty. And you will get so much more traction with your readers and so much more love and devotion from your fans because of the elegant simplicity of your story than you will for its complex convolutions. Beware the use of a magical language. I'm just going to say that right now. Because this comes in two flavors. One, the flavor that you know. Oh, let's just make everything in Latin. Which works if this is a world that has Latin. Uh, I wanted to do some things with Latin in a world that didn't have Latin, so I actually incorporated elements of lingua ignota because it's similar to Latin, but different, and a lot of people aren't familiar with it. So it was a fun thing to do. But yeah, if you're in a galaxy far, far away, people are not going to be using Latin. If they're in a complete secondary world that doesn't have a portal to get to it from Mars, you're not going to be using Latin. Which means you might have to conlang. Uh oh. Now, conlangs is something I'm probably not going to be doing a lot of episodes on because Zidnaf and Artifexian have done really good, really good episodes on their YouTube channels on this. And I just highly recommend go go watch their content because I would literally just be regurgitating 90% of what they said. So go check them out. They are amazing. But you have to ask yourself, if you're going to be using magic words, where are they coming from? And how hard are they going to be to pronounce? Now, if it's an in-story joke that magic spells are almost impossible to spell or pronounce properly, go ahead, like with everything else, just make it as complex and convoluted as you possibly want it to be and just like hope that it rolls well. But... If you want them to actually be pronounceable, if you actually want people to be invested in them, then maybe you would want to simplify them some. This is, this to me is where magic systems start falling apart. It's when you start adding these elements into it. The components, the spells that have to be said, the rituals that have to be performed. Because the more complex they are, see our earlier rule, right? The more complex they are, the harder they will be for people to buy into. Remember, most classic stories start with, they find a grimoire, they read a spell, uh uh-oh, magic. They find a lamp, they polish it, uh uh-oh, magic. They find a ring, they put it on, uh uh-oh, magic. And I'm not saying that your stories have to be overly simplistic. I'm not saying that your story has to be in that mold. I just really want somebody out there speaking this idea into reality because I don't know that many people that are still like preaching the gospel of the soft magic system because... Hard magic is really in vogue right now, which is one of the reasons why I'm not like going to do a lot of detail about how to actually construct one. Because it's out there. Brandon Sanderson did a very good job about it. Tim Hicks did a really good job with that. And so you can go read their stuff, but you need to understand the caveats going into it. Because it will make it harder for people to like what you're doing. So even if you are coming up with all the rules... And you're doing all of the things. More power to you. And I, I've done it. Look, I'm, I'm, I am I'm. don't want to be called out as a hypocrite here. I do have a hard magic system in one of my settings. It is a thing that there is a rhyme and reason for. But it is not a prerequisite of the genre. And I feel like for so many people, it is starting to become a prerequisite of the genre. That they feel like... If they're not putting in the energy and the effort to create, 
a hard magic system. Then what are they doing with their lives? And that's not what this is. Story comes first. A story always comes first. If it suits the story, do it. Just do it. If it doesn't suit the story, please, please save yourself and your readers a lot of time and energy that could be better spent elsewhere. Because you will be able to do so many more things with your life than just create a magic system. I know this is probably not the episode you signed up for. I know it's probably not the episode that you wanted from me. But it's the one that you're getting. (laughs) Because, like I said, there are advocates of hard magic systems out there that you can find and you can read, you can listen to, you can watch. But a hard magic system is not necessary. And I think a lot of the basics that you hear when people talk about a mixed magic system or a hybrid magic system are just what you really should do in as a baseline for any magic system. Like, don't let magic be willy-nilly. Don't let it be wild because that's where power creep comes in and that's where the just darkness will come and consume your story and consume your worlds. So don't do that. (laughs) But... Don't feel that you have to define every rule of magic before you get started. Because while that does work for some writers, and some writers require that, and while it does work for some stories, it is not a prerequisite of the genre. And in the end, that's what this podcast is all about. It's finding what's best for the reader, the writer, and the story. Because as long as we're serving the story... We are doing our jobs. As long as we are doing what is right for our characters and our story, we are doing a good job. And all too often, I I, I just, I'm not going to name names because this is not that kind of a show, but I can't tell you how many books I have read recently that I had to stop reading because they chose to do a hard magic system and I couldn't get through it. I just couldn't get through it. They, they stopped everything to literally put me in magic school to learn the hard magic system. And I'm not even saying like a fun magic school, just like, here's the textbook of magic and how it works in the setting. And mm, don't do that. Don't do that. Whether or not you are doing a hard or a soft magic system, don't do that. Don't make it all consuming. Don't make it a problem. All right. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you like this new podcast. And I'm really curious what you think about this new format because I did do music for an in, in, in opening credits, but I noticed a lot of podcasts that I listen to don't do that anymore. And I wanted to play around with not doing that, for, at least for a little bit, just to see how I feel. And I, I kind of miss not having opening credits. So I might, I might not do this continuously, but... We'll see. If you have any questions, comments, or topics that you would like to hear discussed on this show, please let me know. Down in the show notes, you'll find a link to the voice message system. Keep it short. Keep it clean. I would love to hear from you. You can also hit me up on social media. I am C. Dorset on Twitter and Instagram, and you can find links to everything that I do over at projectshadow.com. If you have a dollar that you can pass my way, down in the show notes, you'll find a link to Patreon listener support, and coffee for one-time donations. Thank you to everyone who does that. It really does mean the world to me. And yeah, I just, I can't believe that some of you do that. And thank you. If you don't have any money right now, and you'd still like to show some support, and think about sharing either this podcast or anything that I do with somebody that you think would like it. That helps out more than you know. Getting discovered in this industry is really the hardest part. Alrighty. Thank you so much. And as I like to end everything that I do, because it's hard to not make it the exclusive topic of everything that I do. Remember, black lives matter, black trans lives matter, trans identities are valid. And may you have the courage to ride your dreams into reality. 
and don't forget to have the fun. Bye.